obsessed with Donna Hill okay I am reading An Ordinary Woman by her this came out in I want to say 2002 last year was the first time I actually read her uh you know books and really enjoyed it um as you guys know Rhythms by her um where is that at this book made it to my top list like my top books of uh 2022 because girl this gives you a vanishing half aspect uh but this came out before vanishing half but her writing is it's just i don't even know how to describe it she is such a page turner she gives you the feeling of um like a bernisa mcfadden who else bb more campbell uh connie bresco um she, you know that type of writing um you know those women back in like you know the 90s early 2000s and she gives you that feeling you know those books by them black women during those times were unbelievable if you want to read some good books read some books from the 90s and early 2000s especially the 90s by black women because it was a resurgent and i do have a video about that 90s books um i'll put it you know in the description box but yeah, she gives you that feeling. So, of course, after reading Rhythms, I said, oh, I have to put this on my TBR. I've had this book, oh, it's been some years now. I think back when I got into reading, which is like 2018, 2019, I had gotten in the habit if I saw a black woman, like, on a cover, and, and if I looked at, you know, the back of the book, and if it was a black woman, I just grabbed it. And I know I probably got this from probably Second and Charles, and it was nothing um so yeah but i'm so glad that i did because this author is amazing this book is talking about um it's three main characters you have i think her name is A asha uh, yeah asha i think um lisa and ross so asha and lisa they've been best friends since they were kids um and ross is lisa's new husband so it starts off with Lisa and Ross, they're getting um, married. And the problem with this is they have only known each other for like a year. And it looks like they both kind of have doubt, especially Ross. His thing is he wants a good girl and he wants a woman that reminds him of his mother. And Lisa embodies that like totally. And they've only been, like I said, um, going with each other for like a year and a half and they're already you know married i don't think it hasn't even been a year and he's like i love her but i wonder if i'm moving too fast but it his thing is well look i'm already at the church we already I already asked her to marry me what can i do um and then you have lisa who has been engaged three times she is a good girl she comes from a two-parent household you know um so she wants that happy ending she wants a she wants that fairy tale type of, you know, relationship with, that she's seen with her mom and dad, you know. And then you have Asha, who comes from a single parent household. Her dad, you know, uh, left her mom. She's an artist. She's really in touch with herself, especially when it comes to her sexu sexuality. She is a type of woman where, you know, she's not bogged down with one man. She thinks she knows what she wants, she thinks. Um, and she's like that. And... Like I said, they have been friends since they were kids. And, oh girl, the this book hits you from the beginning, okay? I'm going to read just a little bit because I don't want, I can't read it all. I'm going to be real in the bush, okay? Um, because, girl, I will give it away. But let me just give you 
a taste of Donnie Hill's writing. It says, they have names for people like me. Tramp, whore, homewrecker, mistress, the other woman. But in my mind, in my heart, I'm none of those. I'm just like you, like your sister, your aunt, or your mom, an ordinary woman. I'm sure Lisa and maybe even Ross would have a different story to tell you, but I will, but I want to tell you my side. I want to try to explain, just hear me out. Isn't that beyond intriguing? And I haven't even given you the full page, okay? Cause I will give it away. Um, girl, I'm already liking this, okay? Um, I know I should go, it's, she's gonna cause some trouble. We already know what she did, um, so Lord. And this book, it deals with um, friendship, marriage, betrayal, all of that. You know, y'all know I love that, that, that tea and that drama. Um, and Donna Hill with that dialogue, she brings that dialogue too. She brings the drama, so I'm all here for it. I also love the fact that, you know, these are, I, I love it in any books, especially when it's written by, you know, black authors that the characters, they're established, you know, they have, uh, they're educated, you know, they have degrees, they are, they're established, they got their own place, they ain't begging for nothing, you know, I like that, it's like a breath of fresh air, because, you know, sometimes in society, they just have black people as one thing, and no, um, it just, when it comes to a little love, life is kind of raggedy, especially um asha so i'm basically on i just i'm on like page 33 38 um so yeah but i was thinking um asha and ross's friend cliff they know that they have moved too fast but they're like i don't know if i should say it or not maybe i should just you know leave it alone because Cliff, his, you know, he says something. He says, um, I just want this to work out for my sister. She deserves some happiness with a good man. What is it that you're not saying, Cliff? It happened too fast, Asha, he confessed. I've known Ross longer than Lisa has. I just wonder if Ross happened to come along at the right time when Lisa was still vulnerable getting over that last idiot she was engaged to. And then um, Asha says, I'm sure Lisa didn't base her decision to marry Ross on anything that happened in her past. She finally found the one for her. Third time's a charm, right? With that light of my smile, I tried to wash away the grain images that begin to surround us with the brewing doubts. I don't think, she, do you think she made a mistake? Hey, forget it. That's what Lisa wants. With me, I know with my personality, I'm the type of person where like, if you ask me for my advice, I will give it to you, but I'm not just gonna like voluntarily give it to you, you know, cause it's like, look, I'm like, that ain't none of my business. That's between, you know, you and your man uh, or you and your woman. Um, because you know, if you are a single person and if your friend or, you know, family member or whatever, they have, you know, a man or a woman, they be thinking like, oh, you know, you ain't got no man, so you don't know what you're talking about. Or you you coming for me, you jealous. And I'm like, look, don't put me in that predicament, okay? Because I'm neither of those things, all right? But I'm, again, with my personality, I'm like, look, you know, that that's between you and that person. Now, maybe if it's, if I think like that person's being, maybe if they're like abusive or if I see some signs, I might be like, look, girl, you know you might want to rethink this but at the end of the day it's your decision i'm like that um but i was just thinking like wonder if i had a friend or a family member like if i know that person's not if they rush into something or not good enough or i don't if i think something is you know not right would i tell that person and if i'm being honest i think i wouldn't <laughs> unless it's like my if it's a family member like my sister or something like that or like a cousin i'm really close to or maybe like a friend that's like you know my best friend but still i'm kind of like oh i don't even want to be put in that predicament and i know you you know it's it's real weird tell me if you guys are like that um because again i'm like it's your business your life you do what you want to do again i don't want nobody saying nothing off to me um, but sometimes you do need a person to say something to you and maybe that might change the outlook on the situation. So it's real girl. 
it's like what you do um but yeah just thinking about that you know reading this i'm like lord that's a odd that's an uncomfortable position to be in um so yeah but i was looking over my donna hill books how many i had and i noticed with her writing she does a lot of collective work with authors um you know she does have like just her you know own um you know books like again rhythm and uh what mother never told me this is um this is a sequel to this book and fabulous read both of these but i also read this um this is destiny's daughters so it has three you know three authors are um there it's one story essentially but each author is telling um is writing each sister so it's three sisters and if i'm being honest with you donna hill her her section her characters were the best um and then i have this uh rosie's curl and weave now this look good um you also have donna hill and this is a uh, a new edition because i think this book came out in like 2000 and um oh girl i've been looking for this bookmark <sighs> let me look at this edition y'all <laughs> uh so yeah this came out in 1999 but it's reissued in 2021 i love this edition i actually got this from walmart and then i got this recently you guys know if you uh watch some of my vlogs uh vlogmas i wanted to uh get a book that was dedicated to like christmas time and i read just her um her a story and it was really good so i noticed like i said she does a lot of um collaborations uh, but girl all her collaborations would be off the chain does <laughs> so yeah but um i have to get more books by her i know one that i want to get that she wrote recently was in the bedroom or in my bedroom um, I want to get that. And I think Confessions of B flat. That's an, I think that's the latest one that she has written. I know I want to get that. Um, those are the two that I can think of. Um, because again, I'm a type of person, if I read one book and if I like your stuff, I will get a lot of it. As you can see, I read this and then clearly I have all of these. So it does not take any time for me to like you okay um so yeah donna hill that's what we are reading um i'm still on my um slavery kind of phase or kick uh because of the yellow wife so i started to um dabble in up from slavery by booker t washington and then this Penguin Classic Edition. You guys know I love Penguin Classic Editions. This is Unsung Narratives of American Slavery and Abolitionists. So they have stories. Um, no, they have collections of essays. They have passages of some uh, slave narratives. They have passages from um, children's books from uh, slavery time girl poetry everything this is a gem okay i'm so glad i got this i actually today read about a little bit about charles ball because um that was one of the books that sadiqa johnson um read she said while she was doing her research for the yellow wife um so yeah i know y'all probably tired of me talking about yellow wife and sadiqa johnson i'm sorry y'all but look i am on a high and i already know her book again is coming out her new book is coming out next month and i'm probably going to do a reading vlog of that because yeah it's sadiqa johnson okay that's look that's my new uh favorite author now um it's sadiqa johnson so look getting all the books um but yeah i was dabbling into these so oh i want to show you guys look you guys know um with my binder for my uh black what do you call it black book collector that black binder i have i wanted to put a picture in there and what i did two days ago i printed out a lot of uh covers by um from ebony magazine that i liked and i wish i could get this like actual edition this was a special edition that came out in 1966 look at this cover 
I've even made a bookmark. I made a couple bookmarks today. Uh, you guys know I like my make my bookmarks. I laminate it. And then for one of my, um, what do you call it? Uh, notebooks. Look what I did, you guys. It's not done yet, but isn't that neat? So I just cut out, you know, some, um, or printed out some of my favorite Ebony magazine covers. And I just taped it to my, uh, one of my journals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scotch tape um, both sides. So, yeah, I'm going to put scotch tape like right here so it's going to be shiny. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it on the covers. So it's going to be shiny also, too. I don't have to worry about like the um, pictures uh, coming off. And you see how it's kind of like bending a little bit. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to do that. I need to get some scotch tape. I'm probably going to, you know, go to the, um, what do you call it? Dollar store to get that. But I was like, I wanted to make, um, you know, it was a, it was a black, just a regular black notebook. And I'm like, you know what? I wanted to kind of make it my own. So yeah, this is real neat. I really like it a lot. Um, and then, yeah, I made a couple of bookmarks. Let me show you guys some of the bookmarks I made. So I made an, um, here's another Ebony magazine. This is Nat King Cole's family. You see Natalie. <laughs> um, I made a Dream Girls one, the original one from the uh, Broadway, the 80s. And then I made this. This is Felicia Rashad, Claire Huxtable. She is so pretty. Gosh, she is so pretty. So yeah, and I, I'm so glad I found this. Girl, this was my way to excel. You know what? I'm going to use that for my Donna Hill one. All right. Because, y'all, I pick out, when I have a new book, I do pick out, like, a new bookmark. I actually was going to, I was using this. Well, I don't want to use that. I want to use this. Um, so, yeah. All right, y'all. I got to take my bag, right, guys. I just came from back, back from the store. I don't know why I didn't take you guys with me. I went to, um, of course, I went to Barnes & Noble because I was trying to get, um, Fly Girl by Omar Tariq, because you guys know our book club is starting on the 1st. Um, but I'm going to just have to order it on Amazon. I said I was going to do that. Still haven't done it. I Yeah, I'm going to have to order it on Amazon. I thought that it was available, because at one point it was there, and clearly it wasn't. They just had another one of the his books, because that series, is a, it's a series. It's a three-book series. I think For the Love of Money or something was the one that they had there. Um, but I don't need that one. I need a fly girl. But yeah, I'll order it. But um, I actually got two books and then f for like nothing. Um, and then I got this. It's basically like a calendar. It is. So it's this day in black history. Um, it's this year. It's 365 days. Days of inspiring icons, incredible achievements, and extraordinary events. And basically, it's this is how it looks, but it just has like every day it tells you like an event that went on that day or a birthday or something like that. This is really neat. Okay, what's today? The 26th? Am I saying that the 26th? Today is Friday, 27th. Oh, perfect. Oh my goodness, guys. This is perfect. In 1991, Whitney Houston performed at Super Bowl. It says, importantly, Whitney's performance was the first time the Star Spangled Banner had been broadcast in countries outside of the United States and the United Kingdom. Mm. Oh, that also was during the Gulf War, because the Gulf War is, yeah, 1990s. Okay, that is awesome. This is really cool. Oh my goodness. In January 18th, in 1975, The Jeffersons premiered on CBS. That's cool. And it just gives you like a brief synopsis. And then you also can, it has this. I think you can set this up. How do you do this? Man, I don't want to mess nothing up. This was only four bucks uh, because it was on sale with 75% off. Because this is originally, oh, 15 bucks. Still a good price. But I guess I can 
how do you do this? So I'm probably going to put it um, there. And then I got two books. You guys know Penguin Classic Editions. That is my jam. And when I tell you, I literally was typing up some information about this man uh, because Black History Month's coming up and I'm going to be doing a lot of content when it comes to Black, you know, um, people, events, all that. So y'all just get ready. But I was literally, like I said, typing this man's information up. It is Carter G. Woodson. And this is the miseducation of um, the new girl. I actually have this one that I just got recently. Um, and I only I got this from Second and Charles for only four twenty five. And this actually was um, released this year. It had clearly had to be released this month um, because I keep up with you know, Pink Class Editions, since I really love them. And I was like, oh no, I know this is released this year. And it, it literally was in 2023. I love the cover. I always love their covers. And this was only 15 bucks. So yeah. And this came out 1933. Yeah. And then I got this, which I, it was literally in the back. I When you're looking for like, like Black Studies, yeah. Black Studies, um, sometimes biographies, um, things of that nature, mainly black studies go in the social science section because it has a lot of stuff there. That's where I find a lot of things. I actually got this from the social science, um, section, but I saw this, it was hidden away. It is the nation must awake, uh, Tulsa race massacres of 19, um, 21. This actually Mary, is it Parrish? she is recounting her time you know when it happened I had to get this and i think this is only 16.95 and when did this come out this came out uh in 2021 so yeah and it's only it's short this is only 128 uh pages oh and this is how the author looks i have to look her up Yeah, I know she's probably not alive. I mean, clearly she was born in 1892, so. But, yeah, look at that cover. Oh, you already know I have to display this. This cover is off the chain. What is this pretty? So, yeah, I got, I'm so excited. Because what I'm probably going to do, I know for this one, I, I want to read uh, The Miseducation of uh, the Negro. Never read it. I'm probably going to really, like, annotate, highlight in this one. Um, and then this one will just be like, you know, my little collector copy because I just love Pink and Classic Editions. Oh, awesome. So guys, I want to give you an update on Ordinary Woman. Oh my goodness. So first of all, this book, just so good. That dialogue is unbelievable. But you remember how I was telling you guys, Lisa who she's a married one, she uh, had been engaged three times and she just jumps into a relationship. She's she's a relationship type of girl, you know? Uh, but she met this man named Steven. She, um, background, background. So she is a uh, creative writing professor and she like bumped into him and they started talking and he's from Britain. Yeah, he's from Britain. Um, but within like months, he asked her to marry, you know, him. And let me just tell you how it goes. Cause this was like, girl, okay. It says, um, when he asked me to marry him, there was no doubt in my mind. Yes. Yes. I was in love, not in sex. I had been later with Carl. Carl's another man that she was engaged to. <laughs> This was real. This was forever until Stephen announced that he was returning to England. He had a job he couldn't refuse, he said. He would send for me, he said. I believe him. But I didn't hear from him for almost six months. He vanished from my life as magically as he appeared. Then I received a Dear Lisa letter. He found someone. He was sorry. I He hoped I could forgive him. He wished me all good things. And she's like, F you, Stephen. F you, da, da, da. Can you believe he did that? 
girl like oh my goodness i also love this uh scene when she gets um back from her honeymoon they go to her and ross they go to hawaii and she just it's not what she thought it would be meaning i mean she had already slept with the man so she knew all about that but she was expecting for it to be a little bit different i'm guessing because you know they're married now but it, it was kind of like i was just there you know what i mean it, you know she it just it wasn't doing nothing for her um and again her in her mind she's thinking am i doing is this the right thing to do and then also in ross's mind he's also contemplating and thinking about like lord what have i kind of done like i love her but it's just some doubt okay and clearly you shouldn't be having that on your honeymoon so i've noticed too that ross and asha are kind of similar especially when it comes to their family life okay so let me read you ross's uh you like little family situation um so he has obviously a mom dad uh he's the oldest he has one sister and his dad wants him to basically um go to school like the local community college and he's like no i got into mit which girl your son got into mit you know how hard it is to get into mit said um i got my acceptance letter from mit today i got the scholarship the sudden silence grabbed me by the throat i watched his thick jaw flex his voice came from the pit of his stomach we talked about this months ago ross we decided you're staying here and going to the local, local community college work at the bar and help out with the bills you decided dad you never listened to me when i told you what i wanted what did you say boy his eyes were reduced to two slits as he glanced at me i as he glared at me i could see his entire body tense his muscles for years of working construction you never listened to me i don't want to stay here and go to school i don't want to own the bar and work uh and work for the rest of my uh life suddenly suddenly he stood and his height and bulk seemed more overwhelmed than ever as he moved towards me this is my gd house you <laughs> live by my rules i bust my a every day taking care of you and my family and da 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 okay and then he literally ross like i'm going he goes his dad doesn't like send him off or anything and then a year later his dad passes and he sees the hurt in his mom's eyes and his sister's eyes and he doesn't want to the, he he sees that hurt and you know he sees how they were hurt and affected and he has a hard time saying no and that's why when it comes to lisa he doesn't want to say no because he doesn't want to disappoint lisa like he thinks that he disappointed his mom and his sister um but then let me read you lisa's I know, uh, Asha's, uh, <coughs> ooh, excuse me, mom. Um, it says, okay, it may sound as if I don't love my mom, that I, that I dislike her as a person, a human being. It's not true. Not really. My mom gave me life, put a roof over my head, provided me with an education. She, she fulfilled all her motherly duties, but I never felt that she loved me beyond the fact that I was her flesh and blood or for what I am or for all the things I could become. Love me for my mind, my sense of humor, my smile, the joy I might probably bring to another, probably bring to another or to the world. The things, those love things I never received from my mother. First source of validation in this life. I sought it elsewhere, continued to search for it, an endless, relentless search of self. And she's a um, photographer and she goes all around the world. So, you know, she's, again, like she said, she's just searching for that, that validation, that, that love and that want. No, when it comes to like, you know, their parents and home life, they're kind of similar as opposed to Lisa. Lisa grew up, you know, privileged, two-parent household, very happy and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I was, um, I, 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 you know, I just, I thought about that. I was like, huh. I think that might be some foreshadowing. This is what I was talking about. Okay. You know, when I was telling you guys at the honeymoon, she was like, yeah, you know. Asha can tell, like, she's basically lying 
to her because she was like oh how was your honeymoon you know like girl did y'all you know what did y'all do she's like oh we did all this stuff she's like how y'all had time to do all that like it's your honeymoon like girl it's your honeymoon lisa sighs and search for some place in the room to rest her gaze other than my face it was the whole sex thing sex thing now my interest is truly peaked i leaned forward and ugly image took shape in my head he didn't get strange with you or anything no nothing like that it was just different better worse neither it was just it wasn't the same i don't know how to explain it i thought it i was going to feel changed or something that ross was going to love me differently a million questions ran through my head so many things i wanted to ask but i knew how sensitive lisa can be especially when it comes to sex for the most part she always she was always pretty closed mouth about her sex life and i can respect her privacy but now i wish we had been more open in the past perhaps she would be more willing to share her feelings and anxiousness now and maybe i could help in some way did he hurt you i asked praying that that was not the case nothing like that ross is sweet the way he always is but i she looked at me i don't feel i didn't feel anything i didn't feel him physically no in here she points to her heart inside i could have been a lot it could have been a lot of reasons lisa i say hoping that my tone could somehow soothe her fears even if the words can't so yeah she just goes on but like that's what i was talking about she don't even know again i i think she she's playing herself like i love him but i don't think she like you know what people say like I love that person, but I'm not in love with that person. I think she's in in love with like the potential or the Ross is really good on paper. You know, he's a successful man. He's decent. Um, you know, he's soft. He's gentle. And she loves that idea. That's what it is, that idea. But in here, and the same thing with him, it's just like, and I love how both of them are doubting each other, but they're not saying anything. Um, it just goes to show you, Lord, you got to really know the person, you know, when you get married and stuff like that, you have to know, you know, who you are are dealing with. Because even a little thing that she was kind of frustrated with, Ross can't swim. And she was like, you know they went to hawaii and they were planning she was planning to, to do that that was their first thing and he's like you know i can't swim and she was like i should have known that but it's like girl you don't know him so even little things like that was bothering her like the fact that it wasn't the fact that he couldn't swim it's the fact that she didn't know that he couldn't swim um but yeah it this book really does make you think okay when it comes to relationships and stuff like that i already know it's gonna make me think even more because i'm just at the beginning um and stuff hasn't even popped off yet okay uh so yeah but so far love it i mean come on it is donna hill and then also i have to i was telling you guys about my um journal or whatever so i did get the scotch tape and you can kind of see if i do like this you can see that it's kind of yeah right here it's shiny so i just got to do one more in the middle right here and then it'll be done but oh i like it a lot i might do this to another notebook wait i just gotta put that right there but isn't this cool it just adds a little character to it so yeah i need to um I'm going to read a little bit more. I actually need to clean up. Girl, my house looks a mess. I'm not even going to show y'all my kitchen. It is embarrassing. It, girl, I'm giving you hoarder biak, okay? So, yeah, let me go and clean up. <sighs> y'all, it's snowing again. I'm so sick of this, so I don't know what to do. You're supposed to get three, six inches. Man. When I tell you I'm so sick of the snow, this is ridiculous. 20-something degrees. Lord. Okay, guys. So, I finished the book. Excuse my parents. Look, my hair not done. Girl. Um, but I finished this this morning. And when I tell you, yet again, impressed. Um, 
I keep on saying over and over again, Donna Hill can write. I've read four of her books, I believe, and all of them are different. You know how you have an author where, you know, when they have like multiple books and the characters are the like the whole setting is different, but you still kind of feel like, oh, this is a, a you still feel like it's a character, the same character, but just like in a different scenario or a setting. She doesn't do that um, because all the characters I've read, all the characters, um, all the books I've read by her, they are just all different. Um, and this was a page turner, okay? I literally, I literally went to bed at four in the morning. I had to like make myself go to bed. Um, and then right when I got up, I picked this book up because I wanted to know what was going to happen. And it ended perfectly. Now this whole vlog, I'm being so around the bush because I do not want to give it away, you guys. I do not. And like I said it before, the first page, it tells you what happened. Um, so yeah, throughout the whole book, the reader knows what happened. We're just you just get backstories okay so um again her dialogue is so good it gives you that um terry mcmillan dialogue you know terry mcmillan can write that dialogue okay but this it it got to me it says um she said sometimes in life as much as you love someone if there are needs unfulfilled things left unsaid emotions not expressed it opens the doorway for someone to step in or out intentionally or not i believe you okay okay wait because i want to give it away let me see i believe that you made an unconscious choice built upon the holes that were in your life once those holes are filled you never have reason to decide to walk through the same door all right but i again i'm being around the bush y'all because i almost told y'all what was gonna happen um but i do like when she said um sometimes in life as much as you love someone there are needs unfulfilled things unsaid emotions not expressed um this book it makes you think it honestly does it makes you think about relationships it makes you think about marriage it makes you think about friendship all of just the things in life, you know, our day to day, our, our friendships, um, whether it's between, you know, a man or a wife or, you know, a friend that you've known for, you know, years and years you grew up with. It just makes you think about relationships in general. <sighs> People can be a trip. That's all I have to say. Um, I actually liked all of these characters. I honestly did. At first, Lisa kind of, I'm like, oh, Lisa. It wasn't that I didn't like her, but it was kind of like, girl, like, just come on now. Um, but then I grew to like her because I understood her and her situation. Um, Asha, I liked Asha, um, but it's some things that you just don't do. Um, and the same thing with Ross, uh, it's just some things you just do not do when it comes to friendships and stuff like that. And again, it was so realistic. So, 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 so realistic. And I love the way it ended. You got closure. Um, I'm big about that. You guys know I'm always big about my books giving me closure. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a, a happy ending. But just, and it doesn't have to be wrapped up in a bow, a pretty bow. But don't just leave me hanging, okay? Um, and this book did not do that. I urge you guys to please get this. This is a page turner. It honestly is. Look at this cover. Unbelievable. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to continue to read more of her books. It's just, I'm going to continue to do it. I'm a slow reader. And the fact that I read this in like three, four days, that means, okay, girl, she's good. Because I tend to read books so slowly. I've just always been a slow reader. But again, I want to know what was going to happen. Um, and she, it's paced perfectly, you know, you're waiting for that anticipation, but it's, again, like I said, it's, um, she just knows how to tell the story, the full rounded story. You, you, you don't leave this book wanting more. 
You know what I mean? You honestly don't. Um, and like I said, the pacing was unbelievable because sometimes as a reader, if you know what happened, you know, you, you have to get to that point in the story like, okay, when everybody else finds out. And it can sometimes be a little like slow pace, but in her case, it wasn't, you know, it was the right timing of the book. Um, so yeah, guys, that's all I have to say when it comes to Donna Hill. Donna Hill is a goat in my book. Everyone needs to read a Donna Hill book. You guys, please read at least one Donna Hill book. Okay. Um, this has been just, yeah, it's been amazing. So yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. And I'll be back with more black books. Bye.